Dreams do not have a filter that your normal, polite, waking self puts up. Welcome to the hidden meaning of dreams with Sweet Georgia Pam. It does matter what the dreamer themselves associates with those things that come up in the dream. Spiritual director, dream expert, author, and educator, Sweet Georgia Pam is here to remind us that dreams are the answer. They're always with you. They know you better than you know yourself, and they're always trying to tell you the truth. There's some back and forth here between you and some awareness. And now your host, Melissa Carter. Welcome, everybody. Don't forget to go to SweetGeorgiaPam.com to find out more about Sweet George Pam. And you can also go on social media, Sweet George Pam. You can always uh, DM her if you want to uh, ask about a dream. We'd love to to share your dream on air if that's all right with you. And if you're watching on YouTube, just leave it a, a description, not a subscription. Uh, <laughs> you could subscribe, though. Uh, but leave a description of your dream in the comments. We'd love to use it on a show. I'm going to be selfish and start with me today, if that's all right. Oh, yes. Let's work on you, Melissa. Because I want to talk about recurring dreams. So it does serve everybody else. But okay. I, it, it's not necessarily the same details of a dream. But mm -hmm. the same thing that brings anxiety happens, and that is heights. I'm always scared of the heights of a dream. So I remember just fragments of certain dreams where there was one where I was in a kind of a stone castle kind of thing. And I started walking up the stairs, I guess, to a tower. And mm -hmm. in the dream, I wasn't aware of the height thing. But as I ascended the stairs, I thought, here we go again. And so mm -hmm. usually when the heights happen in my mind, I, rem I recall in the dream the fact that I always seem to dream about this. So it's mm -hmm. almost as if it, it alerts me to the fact I'm dreaming when I get to that point. But there's sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I'm truly think that I'm on the end. So usually I'm on the edge of this great fall and mm -hmm. I'm just gripped with anxiety. Heights is my recurring dream. Wow. Is the anxiety, does anything come of that in the dream or is it just you recognize you're in a high place and anxiety I recognize, I, I recognize I'm in a high place, anxiety ensues, and then usually that's the end of the dream. There, there have been times where I've been able, since I was a child, if I have a hint that this might be a dream, then I'll squint my eyes really tight and I'm able to wake up from my dream. Oh. Um, that's not always, but it's when, sure. if I think it's a dream, I remember I can squint my eyes and wake up and I usually do. So there's a mm -hmm. lucid, lucid moment within mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. but it's, that's not always the case, but, but there's no resolution. There's no coming mm -hmm. down from it. It's mm -hmm. usually, that's the end of the dream. Yeah. Is the heights. Are you afraid of heights in real life? Yes. Okay. All right. So Don't tell anybody, so don't tell my son. I try, I try to play cool. <laughs> Actually, I bet that leads to the anxiety dream because you repress it <laughs> and then it comes out. In true. Yes. I try not well, to share that too much, but yes, yes. Cause part of it is dreams are that pressure valve release on some of the pent up emotions that we've experienced throughout the day or the week or things that are getting to be too much internally. And we have to release some of that emotion that's trapped in the body. Well, when I've worked on morning shows and there's travel involved, like flying, I don't like to fly and has nothing to do with safety, which is a, the fear of a lot of other people. I don't like mm -hmm. to fly because of how high we have to go. Mm -hmm. It's the height of the plane that mm -hmm. disturbs me. And mm -hmm. I, have to, I literally have to take what I call a happy pill, doctor prescribed <laughs> happy pill <laughs> yeah. just for flying. So yes, heights is not mine. I, I get very disoriented. So partly dreams are helping us practice being in that state of fight, flight, or freeze. So we don't want that to be the case, but our dreams will take our heightened emotional state that we are, that we just can't handle. We think it's going to kill us and they will, they dial down the emotion just enough so we can look at it in the face. Mm-hmm but still express the most of the emotion we possibly can muster. So that's partly your dreams are just helping you process the fear of heights, but dreams are layered in their meaning. There's always deeper 
depths of meaning to get to, which is my drug of choice is to go like deeper and deeper into this. Well, that what see, that's what makes you spiritual. unique and, and special. And let me just say here, because if you're new to the show, what I love about Sweet Georgia Pam is the fact that you're not just a dream dictionary. That's the, that's the point is that dreams do have depth. And if you're willing to unwrap it, Mm -hmm. then you might heal something that is a part of yourself that you didn't realize you could. Right. Is that fair right. to say? Yes. They're so, and they're so accessible. So there is an intuitive piece of this work too. So I've been practicing and studying dreams for 17 years. What I have learned is that this is as much about you, the dreamer, Melissa, as it is about the generalized anxiety height dreams that everybody might experience. Mm -hmm. So what I know about you, Melissa, and what because we're I, friends in real life. Yes, <laughs> we are. You know me pretty well. We actually like each other is that, that you said ascension, you said I was ascending the staircase and I went, yeah. Ooh, there's some, there's some ascension. So what it feels like to me in this case is you rising above your foundation rising above or descending away from what you were given as a foundation. So spiritual exploration that starts to feel a little bit scary because you're not grounded mm -hmm. or levels of success over the years is not very grounded and normal in your upbringing. Right. So as you start to ascend, separate from the ground of your being of what you're used to or what you believe or what you were taught as a mm -hmm. child, fear takes over because it that doesn't feel stable. Again, that's the beauty of dreams is it's very personal to the person. And so those are very personal comments and it's true. And I'm the personality that I'm always driven to try something new or to do. Mm -hmm. I can't sit still like in my mm -hmm. real life. I can't, I have to be doing some accomplishing something. I don't mm -hmm. know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, <laughs> but I'm always trying to accomplish something. I could see where I'm constantly trying to go above and beyond the foundation that I was given because yeah. of that creative spirit and that drive to do something. Yeah. So. And, and extreme high, especially if it's a thin structure and you go super high, it's about this uh, reaction to, oh, I may have gone too far too fast. Hmm. Okay. So if, if something in life starts working that you didn't expect it to <laughs> actually work right. out, right. <laughs> it can cause a reaction of like, oh no, this isn't enough of us. This isn't, it didn't take very long, so it can't be very stable. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. Now, yeah. expanding it, uh, you know, broadening it to our listeners, our viewers, mm -hmm. recurring dreams in general, are they something that similar to what you said about me, where it's just an issue that may be just a consistent issue in your life that your body's responding to? Mm hmm not in a, oh, that's what it is. So I don't have to worry about it kind of way. Right, right, <laughs> but exactly. Way, but instead it's an emotional fingerprint that when that emotion or that set of emotions arrives in your life again, it's going to trigger that symbol to show up in a dream again. Mm -hmm. So as you are working through that issue, because you're growing up, you're getting different experiences, you're learning incrementally how to address that issue then your dreams, that recurring dream is going to shift and change. The things change, but that particular aspect stays the same. Yeah. So you can actually map your progression, your growth by exploring how the recurring dream changes over time. I love that there's something to measure, right? And, mm -hmm. and to follow up with that for someone who let's say that somebody has a recurring dream of a plane crash. They yeah. may, uh, they may misinterpret it as a premonition. So do you mind also commenting on dreams and them not necessarily being a premonition and, and probably most of the time are not? I don't mind commenting, but we also need to make that a separate thing because again, the, the depths and the layers. <laughs> oh, I just teased. I just my teased little our brain, My little brain just went <laughs> I, like, we, I have so many ideas. I, th I think I just, I just teased our next episode. So you know what? We can just end that here. All right. So again, well, well, no, you got more? No, 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 no. I mean, I, I kind of want to, um, 
she she, no, I, she go, was addicted. Don't no, leave me here. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. I'm going to write this down. So premonitions and dreams is our next episode. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Now because you, now you was, know what to expect next. <laughs> there was something as you started to bring that up, there was, I was like, oh yeah. And then you went like, also, and I'm like, oh God, I'm sorry. See, this, uh, is, this is why friends doing a podcast. It's, it's, we'll, we'll get you back. We'll get you back. A little sip of my coffee here. We're um, talking, so w- before okay. I got into the premonition, it was the recurring and other yeah. people having recurring dreams. And I said yeah. that, that you can measure, you know, you said, because you could see yeah. and can measure. Okay. Did that help? Trigger? Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> we're back. I we're that. back. We're back. Um, okay. Because <laughs> this is, this is what, what's important is that you start a dialogue with your dreaming mind. What's important is that you start to notice that, oh, I dreamt about tornadoes last night. It's not a one and done dream. It can be, we can interpret it as a one and done experience. But once you have tornadoes in your mind, you might also start to remember tornadoes in previous dreams or in the future, tornadoes might start to show up Mm -hmm. more. It's, it's not necessarily that they're showing up more. It's that you're starting to notice your own dream personality. And so recurring dreams are not as rare. It's not just the one recurring dream that you have. It's not just heights. That's where you're starting is wow. I have recurring dreams of heights. The more you give your time and energy to just exploring what your dreams are, the more you become familiar with, oh, that's a normal dream for me. Or, oh, that's that dream feels similar to a dream I had about a week ago. Let's look at those two together. So hello, rabbit hole. Just come on down into the rabbit hole with me because it's not just here's how to interpret your dream. It's here's how to open up and start integrating your dreaming life, your dreaming mind into your life. Love it. I love it. If you want a free downloadable guide from Sweet Georgia Pam called Six Nights to Better Dream Recall, just go to sweetgeorgiapam.com and don't forget she's on social media at Sweet Georgia Pam. All right, we'll see you next time. Sweet dreams. The content in this podcast is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Pam Muller is not a licensed mental health professional. If you or someone you know suffers from severe, persistent nightmares, please seek medical help.